In this video, I will introduce and motivate data visualization and define the goals for this course. We will focus on data visualization for publications and presentations in the academic context, but not only. Data visualization courses are sometimes very general, sometimes very specific. We will try a middle ground. We will try to focus on practical recommendations with emphasis on reproducibility. We will see that for reproducibility, we will probably need to learn some scripting in Python or R, but our ambition will not be to turn this into a programming course, and we will not focus on programming languages. Instead, I will try to bring you on a good track to show you which tools exist and provide, hopefully, useful starting points for you to explore. There are many excellent books on the topic, and here I only list three, and I particularly wish to highlight the first one, Fundamentals of Data Visualization by Klaus Wilke, which I really enjoyed and I recommend everybody. I encourage you to also explore more resources which you can find in the accompanying slides. An excellent paper, other presentation slides. Check also out the Twitter hashtag TidyTuesday, where people share their challenges and plots once a week. I really like this quote from Klaus Wilke's book. One thing I have learned over the years is that automation is your friend. I think figures should be auto-generated as part of the data analysis pipeline, which should also be automated. And they should come out of the pipeline ready to be sent to the printer. There should be no manual post-processing needed. Because all of us have been or will get into a situation where we need to adjust figures few days before the deadline for a manuscript or the PhD thesis. And this is one of the two take-home messages. Avoid tools which cannot be scripted. Stay away from tools where plots can only be modified manually by pointing and clicking. It may co cause you last minute trouble and it may cause trouble for the group leader or the next PhD student who needs to recreate or adapt the figures of a student who already left. Optimize for comprehension and accessibility. This means font size, colors, suitable representation, title, caption, and we will discuss these in this data visualization video series. So why do we visualize data? A classic example to motivate data visualization is Anscom's Quartet. Four data sets which look distinctively differently see the left panel, but all four plots have the same statistics. They have the same mean of x and y, same variance of x and y, same correlation between x and y, same linear regression. And this can be taken to the extreme with this nice animated example, and the animation shows different graphs, even a dinosaur, again with the same stats. And if we only looked at the numbers, right panel, we would miss the pattern. So we almost always need to do both. And with data visualization, we get more insight into data, and it is easier for us to see patterns and problems. Both calculations and graphs should be studied, and each will contribute to understanding. But it's not only about understanding. Data visualization allows us also to communicate insight to others and facilitate their understanding of our work in presentations, in publications, and when communicating research with the public. We also create typically plots because, well, our supervisors tell us to, and in this we often copy existing style and culture, and that is good. But hopefully after this course, you will be able to sometimes suggest a different way to visualize the data in your research group. In other videos of this series, we will discuss figure design and the design process. We will learn the vocabulary of visualization we will discuss which tools to choose. We will demonstrate reproducible plots, talk about data formats, and finally about how to arrange figures and tables for reports and publications.